Chain is keen on being one of the most energy efficient blockchain platforms, focused on sustainability and supply chains. I'm really looking forward to this conversation with the CTO of VeChain, Antonio Senatore. Antonio, welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Wearing a beautiful VeChain jacket as well. Oh, yeah. Wow, so I'm between the crowd and the drinks. So <laughs> <laughs> you put me in a hot spot. Here. We already <laughs> smell the, the bitter balls yeah, and everything. Right. Uh, we still have some time. I literally made them only start serving after five o'clock. So we have all the time. <laughs> <laughs> First, gonna enjoy the conversation with you. Um, you also have quite a long track record. I mean, you were a global blockchain CTO at Deloitte. You've been working at Deutsche Banks. At Deutsche Bank, um, what lessons are you bringing to VeChain from these corporations? Well, especially in Deloitte, I've been 11 years, and since 2016, so for about five years, I was the global CTO for everything related to blockchain and crypto. I think Deloitte really gave me something around the business impact of everything you're trying to achieve. How do we map the impact? Who are the actors? How they're going to benefit? When we release something, how do we measure the result? There's a lot I learned in Deloitte also around, you know, and this corporation around people. Um, you know, what, what are the right people you want to bring in in an organization that need to innovate? For, and how do you nurture them? How do you actually grow them? Uh, these, these organizations are very good at growing people, nurturing them, making sure they do what they want to do. And that's one of the things I always ask. You know, they say, well, what should I do, Antonio? You know? What do you want to do? We have plenty of stuff to do. What is this that you want to focus on? And so giving them the chance to innovate, etc. There are things in corporations, though, that you can apply to VeChain or to, to any other layer one right. or any other startup, like the risk adversity of these organizations. And it's, they're rightly structured in this way. We, we can't really change them. But you know, when you work in large corporates, anything you do is surrounded by a massive framework from a client onboarding to the way you run a project, to the way you design software, etc. I remember one sentence of a friend of mine said, these things are there to protect you from making mistakes. Because in large organizations, you know, failure it's, it's, you know, can cost a lot of money and can be reputationally damaging. Small organizations have to make decisions quick. So what I've done, I turned that around to say, okay, let's create a culture where we fail fast, where everyone is empowered to make decisions, no, la no large frameworks. Let's create a culture where we make a decision based on the information we have now, and we may change it later, because anyway, changing something you're doing, you know, if you do it quick and with small iterations, you can actually go pretty fast. So there are things I approve from the law, Accenture, I've been in Accenture six years, and there are things I said, okay, those things cannot work in a startup, so yeah. we are not going to do that. But now you're working for VeChain, working yes. uh, again for uh, the larger corporations in the world. Can you share some cool use cases yeah. where VeChain is already implemented successfully? Yeah, yeah. like VeChain was, it's a layer one, and so hence it's a crypto company. One, one of the initial things at the beginning was to try to bridge the gap between uh, you know enterprises, large corporates, as you're saying, and a layer one. You know they could, they just were ignoring uh, layer ones uh, for several reasons. One was the crypto aspect of it, so we rem we didn't remove it, but we created a fee delegation mechanism. There were other things like governance of layer one protocols and who were the miners or the validator. We created 101 uh, authorities nodes that are KYC. So a large corporate knows who is behind the chain, who is actually processing the transactions. Uh, so we did, we did that work, and now we're focusing more around sustainability. One, which is, sustainability is everything, okay? It's from environment, uh, it's, it's, it's people, it's labor, it's governance. Uh, some of these cases, the low hanging fruit was, was supply chain, because that's across all industries. All industries have been struggling with supply chain. And uh, COVID has just accelerated that, has shown to us that we really didn't know where things were coming from and when to expect things, and that all the data that weren't aligned, and that there was a problem really in the sustainability and resiliency of the supply chain. So we started with that. Um, my story is a typical example uh, one. 
it's quite, it's quite simple, where you basically tag a bottle of wine and uh, you tag a bottle of wine. So what happens there is, is the idea of a digital passport, which we call, or a product passport, which we call digital. So at any point, digital, it's the former digital twin. At the beginning of crypto, we were talking about digital twin, twins. But we've been tagging a lot of these things, <laughs> like millions of bottles, shoes, anything, with tags and tags and tags. What a, what a digital gives to you is, uh, it's a digital password that represents all the data and all the steps that the product has gone through. Now, once we, you've got this data, you can, of course, prove provenance. You say, that is original, that is a proper bottle of wine. Uh, my story does that. Uh, along my story, you know, there are also solutions we have done in the fashion industry. So, but what's the real value? Okay, the real value is, you know, the provenance is correct, fine. But the digital password gives you more information, more data. And when you have more data, you have information, you can define new pattern of value. And that's what we always say, the Web3 world is a, is a space where, and I think today everyone has been talking about Web3, but for us it's a space where everyone, uh, you know, owns data, owns digital asset, and, uh, you know, the concept of value really changes because there may be more things that matter. Let's can you say, give an example of the, the bottle of wine? No, uh, I, I think wine. that a bottle of wine can be if it's sourced from a from good labor, like, I'm, from, I'm a southern Italian, okay? I've been living in Ireland 16 years. Where I come from, tomatoes are a big thing. San Marzano, you know those. Uh, labor is, is a problem, uh, like, the, 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 and recently it's been a problem. It's all over the news where it's not sustainable, it's not fair labor, okay? Uh, can you track that? And once you track that, that who is the man behind that? And is there a certification that the worker that is there is actually, it has, it's been treated fairly, etc. which there is. So it, it drives you the product passport, okay, with a bottle of wine, with the tomato, etc. So you can assign a new value. You can say, okay, there is value of the bottle of wine, but then I, I have a social value there. And then you can have also an environmental value, whether you use techniques that are environmental friendly. In the area where I come from, in many wineries, for instance, the disposal of all residual in, in the agri-food, it's, it's another big thing. It's been a problem for many years. So uh, Web3 really, you know, by, it can enable users to, 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 to give different type of value to things that are not only, it's not only the monetary value, it can be, anything else that we put that. And also to me, incentivize good behavior. Incentivize good behavior, and that, that's another part of the Web3. The whole Web3 and whole crypto moves around incentivization. Uh, the coin-based transaction on Bitcoin is an incentivization mechanism, if you think about it. Uh, proof of stake. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, you, you are paid to, to keep the network running and to mine, so you wanna, you wanna run a node. Proof of stake, why you, you want to stake? Because you're getting some returns. Right. So everything in centralization. Now let's think about Web3 sustainability. Let's apply the same concept. Companies are gonna be incentivized to be sustainable because they, they want to attract users because they <coughs> users and consumers because they're gonna redefine the concept of value. Myself, let's say I wanna buy a new a new pair of shoes, okay, or a bag or whatever, you know. Um, Glasses, sunglasses, uh, they're branded. I, I'm gonna buy because I know they are legitimate, but I also see there's been fair labor on that, and then I can also see it's been good material has been used. And then, you know, I have also an incentive to send on a secondary, if I'm tired of that, I can sell on a secondary market. Why I have that incentive? Well, one is because if I do that, I can still be one of the owners of the product, and I get paid, people on the other side are gonna buy because they know there is a provenance, and then as the product moves along, it can go to, again, be sold again, and myself as, a, as an initial owner, I can get even some, some, some further incentive for that, and you can be incentivized into recycling it, because in a, in a circular economy, there's someone that is gonna pay for recycling it, even in, you know, even aluminium is an important <laughs> thing, and you, you do that very well in the Netherlands, uh, in, in Denmark, uh, Germany, recycling of cans. 
of care. Yeah, plants of uh, yeah, yeah. aluminium care. Aluminium, because it's a very expensive material. Yeah. Um, and so now we've been focusing on uh, really Fiji and working on like showcasing the you know, sustainability of organizations uh, within their supply chains. But you as an organization also proclaim to have one of the most energy efficient blockchain platforms. How are you working on this? How yeah, we, you know, we, we've been putting a lot of effort into that to see, okay, how much, what's our carbon footprint? Okay, guys, how much are we doing? Because if you want to, if you want to tag something, okay, uh, and the, let's say a bottle of wine, it, as an NFT, and then the carbon footprint of the NFT is bigger than the carbon footprint of the bottle of wine, you got a problem there. Okay, you are not, you just, you just can't go out and claim that. Okay, so the way we, we have, and you, you're not credible, you can't be credible. It is, didn't happen to us. We, we worked around the consensus mechanism, which people here probably know, which is a proof of authority. It's fairly simple, but we have the uh, POA, it's a gadget that proves finality. But basically, we have a number of authorities that are well defined, and they, they stake. Uh, so to enter the authority mechanism, they have to put some some bet into it, which is you know which is their reputation. Then it's a stake. They are KYC. We know they are the steering committee approved them, and that algorithm is so lightweight that that allows us to stay very low in terms of carbon footprint. This is also our transaction model and some of our. Uh, cryptography uh, primitives we use are a lot more lightweight than others. We also use a mechanism of uh, transaction, like multi clause transactions. So things that on a normal chain would cost yeah. you 200 transactions to be sent. Every time you send a transaction, it propagates, propagates, propagates. You use the P2P libraries, that's the way it works. It's, it's exponential. For so us, all it becomes like one step back. I didn't like, I didn't get yeah, it. it's basically when you are in, in the business world, you know, when you try to do something, there's always multiple transactions. Mm -hmm. Whatever you try to do, I send this to you, you pay me, then I pay the other guy, then we recycle this. Yeah. You know, in, blockchain, in the blockchain space, we are all used to, a transaction is atomic, A goes to B, and the state changes. So to do a complex business operations that require 100 steps, you submit 100 transactions. We have created a multi-clause transaction mechanism where you submit only one transaction, which has multi-clause. That avoids, in terms of data, to spam the network heavily and consumes a lot less energy. So we are 0.04% of the average layer one blockchains. We have been certified. Energy-wise? Uh, sorry? Energy-wise. Energy -wise. And that's put in pressure to everyone, which is good. Uh, that's what we want. We, yeah. this is, you, know, you, you want everyone to behave better. Uh, Sunny, our CEO, always believes in uh, inclusion. We are not here to get the chain to win at all costs, but we want the entire world to win in, the, in this game. Speaking of the world, uh, uh, you're active all over the world, uh, yes. implementing uh, your technology all over the world. Um, now, we had a long discussion, several discussions uh, about Mikar in Europe, oh. but we're not going to talk about Mikar here. Oh, okay. um, I, I had an answer there. No, 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 no. No. Uh, <laughs> no. And, and later at the dreams. Now I'm curious uh, to learn from your side about the Chinese market, because you're also uh, offering services. You're actually now working on the Chinese market with uh, Blockme, yeah. For example, how is it working with the Chinese? How is it actually implementing your technology? Uh, yeah, it's not that we are entering the Chinese market. We we've always been there. First of all, uh, I think we never left. Blockme is doing. I think these guys are doing. Uh, that's one thing. Yeah, we are a layer one protocol. My job as a CTO is to give companies tools to build sustainability web three applications uh, distributed app, a decentralized app, easily on the chain. So we have a series of tools that does that. So anyone can build anything there, effectively. And it is also general purpose. I try and we try to incentivize sustainable ecosystem, but someone could decide to do whatever they want because it's an open open platform. In that case, in case of block meme, it's a very good use case around the fashion and sustainability and track and trace. Um, we we are not, how can I say, uh, they built that themselves using WeChain. And China has never been uh, against the blockchain world. It's been more against crypto and the crypto exchanges. So we have a, a series of tools that enable fee delegation. So you can use the platform without having crypto. 
and you then ask some of the authorities that are outside China to pay to pay for transactions. So we have created an entire tool suite which is called Tool Chain, which kind of a data lake, track and trace, you can order tags and uh, you tag all the fashion, anything you want to tag and it works seamless. There's no crypto involvement, but then there is a reconciliation at the end with one of the authorities. I think other layers are now, other networks are implementing fee delegation because it has become a fee, de I mean, fee delegation, yeah. Uh, let's assume I'm a corporate, okay. Let's 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 forget about China. I want to run on WeChain. I want to run NFT on WeChain. One thing you have to do, and or I want to run NFT on any blockchain. Okay. One thing, 100%, you need to have is crypto to run gas. Yeah. Okay. So there are a number of problems there. One is as a corporate, you got to buy crypto. That's a financial asset. Yeah. Now whatever that is. We don't go into that. And Amica is going to tell us what it is. Uh, we talk about Europe. And uh, you need to report it. Then security. Yeah, I'm a CTO. That's not easy. Your hackers are there long all day long trying to steal your crypto. So uh, these organizations don't have the experience. So they have the experience around security, but they never have most of them digital assets. They are becoming more proficient, etc. So running. A CISO, a security officer, will tell you, I don't want to deal with that stuff. Because what happens if someone steals that and you're a public company, your reputation is damaged. Say, oh, company X uh, has been, and we, I don't know, they stole a thousand meters from company X. That's how much that is at the current time, uh, 1.7 million. Uh, and, that, and, and, and then that's damaged the, the reputation. And so corporates really are still staying away from holding and, uh, and using crypto for operations. There is also a problem of price fluctuation. And so at VeChain we say that we need free delegation. We need them to run without crypto. And then they, you ask one of the authorities in the network to say, can you pay this for me? We can strike a deal outside, outside the transaction and at the end of the year we reconcile in fiat, in euro and dollars. They're closing down the conversation. Uh, I'm really curious to learn from your side, uh, as a CTO, looking for all, to all the technological developments that we uh, see right now, that you probably also foresee in the upcoming months. Uh, we saw zero knowledge proofs, yeah. all kinds of new layer um, uh, products being developed. Um, what is the one exciting development that you're really looking forward to in the upcoming months? Uh, from from in the crypto space, yeah, yeah. Not in the crypto space. Yeah. Three things, uh, three, but four let's things. Name them most important. Oh, yeah. For me, it's tagging solutions and the 2D materials, graphene, tags. Text, taxing solutions. Sorry? So the text is tag, tagging, like yeah. NFC and ah, things like that. Yeah. We, yeah, Vision, we are working with the Singapore University and the Nobel Prize winner, Professor Constantine, around the graphene. It's 2D materials. 2D materials are semiconductor. 2D means that they don't have a third dimension. It the, the layer is one atom. Okay, I think this can change the future of products. I, I'm, I'm saying that here because I'm sure everyone else has mentioned layer two, zero knowledge proof, etc. I'm very excited about that because it's gonna it's gonna work nicely for us. It's huge. Basically, when you create a product, you no longer tag the product. The product itself is is the tag. It's already alive because of these materials, and it's a semiconductor. It has energy. It can connect. That can change the world as we see it. I think in the next 10 years, uh, I hope uh, working with Professor Constantine from the University of Singapore can, can really, and Manchester, he got the degree, <laughs> he works there as well, uh, can really change the, the world of uh, manufacturing in general and digital and the whole, the whole you know, bridge between the digital and the physical world so that they become one. Bringing back trust in supply chain, trust in all these products, for sure. Yes. Um, yeah, I think, Antonio, we can. <laughs> oh, for hours, there are so many cool things that you and uh, Feechain are working on. But I really would like to thank you for this conversation and uh, good luck with all the efforts of uh, Feechain. I think one of the most respected uh, yeah. Yeah, companies in the scene already with us for a very uh, long time. So uh, it, was very, uh, it was a pleasure having you here at the Dutch Project Days. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you.